In this video tutorial, we will learn how we can chat with multiple PDF files with Langchain, Namato, and Pineworth. So here is the complete architecture. So first of all, the user will upload the PDF files. The multiple PDF files, they can be, there can be two PDF files, three or four PDF files. In that step number two, we will extract the data from those PDF files. So now, as we are using Llama2 model, Llama2 model has an input token limit. Or, so one token is equal to four English characters. So there is 4096 token limit. So we cannot pass more than 16,000 English characters at the input of Llama2 model. Okay, so as uh, for example, when we extract the data from multiple PDF, there can be more than 16,000 English characters, the data which we extract from the multiple PDF. So if as the Llama2 model has an input token limit of 4096 characters or 16,000 English characters, so that we can say that we cannot pass more than 16,000 English characters at the input of Llama2 model. So when we extract data from multiple PDFs, so there can be more than 16,000 English characters uh, that, that uh, from the data that we extracted. So we cannot pass the data directly to the Llama2 model. So what we do is we split the data into text chunks. So we create small text chunks of the data and we can define that in each text chunk we can have more than uh, or we can define that in each text chunk there can be maximum 500 English characters. So first we will lower the PDF files, then we will extract the data from this PDF file, then we will split the data into small chunks and we can define that in each text chunk there can be maximum number of 500 English characters or 1000 English characters. So then we will create embedding for each of the text chunks. Embeddings are basically vectors that are used to compress the size of the text chunk. So embeddings are basically vectors that are used to compress the size of the text chunk. And we have embeddings in this form 0 0.1, 0 0.3, 0 0.3. So in this way, we will create embeddings for each of the text chunk. So if we have 10 different text chunks, we will have we will create embeddings for each of the text chunk. So we will have 10 embeddings. And if we have 20 text chunk, we will have 20 embeddings. If we have 100 text chunk, we will have 100 embeddings. So after creating embeddings for each of the text chunk, then we will build a knowledge base based on these embeddings. So using these embeddings, we will create a knowledge base. So knowledge base, or you can say we will create a vector database. So in this tutorial, we are using fine cone as our vector store or database. So we will be creating a knowledge base or vector database where we will store all the embeddings and we will use Pinecone uh, as our vector store. Pinecone store the embeddings in the cloud and one advantage is that uh, anyone can assess these embeddings. Okay, so while other like other vector stores like Pies or Chroma, they store the embeddings locally on your system. While Pinecone save the embeddings on the cloud and anyone can assess these embeddings. Okay, so in the next step, when the user asks a question, we will create embeddings for this question and then we will do a semantic search. So in semantic search, we will find a top three or top five answers that are related to the question that the user have asked. So the, when the user asks a question, we will find out top three or top five answers of this question from the knowledge base we have created in the knowledge base we have stored all our text in the form of embeddings so we try to find the answer of the user question from our knowledge base where we have stored all the embeddings so after finding the results we rank the results like we just uh, show the we just keep the top three or five results okay so we can define how many results we can keep by the setting the parameter value k. So we just kept keep the top three responses that we have got from our Pinecone database. And then we send those responses to the directly to the Llama2 model. And what we do is we send the user question to the Llama2 model as well. And we send the responses to the Llama2 model as well, which we have got from the knowledge base, which is Pinecone vector database. And then Lama2 model generate a natural response and Lama2 model uh, help us to generate a natural response which we get as the end user. So this is in short the complete explanation of how it works. Or well, you can say this is the complete architecture. I have just explained you how basically it will work.
Okay. So let's move towards the implementation part and let's see how we can do this. So now you can see over here, uh, this is the notebook file. I've already prepared this notebook file. So basically before running the script, please make sure that you have selected E4 GPU. So in the first step, we will install all the required packages. So I've just run this cell and install all these required packages. Okay, so this installation might take a few seconds. Oh, you can see that the packages are installed. So here we are using Langchain package. Uh, Langchain is a basically framework that allows us to build large language models. Then we have Pinecone client. We will use Pinecone to store our embeddings in the cloud. Then we have Sentence Transformers package. We require Sentence Transformer package so we can download the embeddings from Hugging Face. So basically we want to convert our text chunk into embeddings. So we want to create embeddings for each of the text chunk. So we will use Sentence Transformer embeddings from Hugging Face and these are free. So PDF to image, uh, we require this package if you want to display an, uh, an, a page from our PDF file as an image in the Google Colab notebook. Then we have PyPDF. So we require PyPDF a package so that we can load our PDF file and extract the data from the PDF file. Then we have the Transformers package. Uh, we require the Transformers package when we want to uh, load the Llama 2 model. And we also require the bits and bytes, accelerate and transformers package as well when we are trying to load the Lama 2 model. Then we are, uh, then we will import all the required libraries. So from, we have PyPDF directory loader so that we can load the PDF files. Then we have recursive director text splitter so that we can split our text into chunks. Then we have hugging face embeddings so we can download embeddings from hugging face. Then we have the Pinecone package so that we can store our embeddings in the cloud. Then we have also required Pinecone and convert from path. We are not using this library here. Then we have auto tokenizer, auto model for casual LM so that we can load the Lama 2 model. And as we are, so we can assess the Lama 2 model or we can assess any model from Hugging Face in two ways. One is that we can assess the model from Hugging Face through API key. And second is that we can assess, uh, we can download the model from Hugging Face locally and create a pipeline. So to assess the Lama 2 model from Hugging Face, we should download the model locally and then create a pipeline. We cannot assess the Lama 2 model from the Hugging Face through API because uh, to assess the Lama 2 model from Hugging Face through API, you need to have an pro account or enterprise account on Hugging Face. So I don't have a pro or enterprise account on Hugging Face. So I do cannot assess the Lama 2 model through API. So I will download the Lama 2 model from Hugging Face uh, and then I will just create a pipeline. Then we have import OS and sys. We will use this library so that uh, we can later exist on us, uh, exist from the uh, loop. So I will use this uh, sys package at the end. Then from language, I am importing Hugging Face pipeline. So basically we are just creating a Hugging Face pipeline. We are not assessing the Lama 2 model to API because this service is available for pro or interface client of a game face. So we are just uh, downloading the Lama 2 model locally and creating a pipeline. So we will just create a prompt template where we pass the default system prompt and our instructions. And then we will use a retrieval through a chain so that we can do a conversation with our PDF. Yeah. So now using MKDIR, I'm just creating a directory over here by the name PDF. So you can see that I've just created a directory by the name PDF. So now I have already placed my PDF files into the drive and I'm directly loading those, downloading those PDF files from the drive into this PDF directly folder. So these are the two PDF files. Let me show you. So now I will be using these two PDF files to chat. So one is the YOLO v7 trainable free beast set of view state of the art for real time object detector. So this is the Yolo V7 uh, of uh, Yolo V7 is an object detection model. So this is the official paper of Yolo V7. And this is the sample resume. Okay, or you can say this is a sample resume, uh, which we, we, I will be using for the chat purpose. So this is sample resume. So, and this is the 
YOLO V7 official paper. So these are the two PDF which I'm using. This paper is 15 pages long. So this is a quite a, a long paper. You can see over here. And this is uh, this resume is two page, three page long. Okay. So you can have three or four PDF files or tens of PDF files as well. So I'm I have just placed those uh, PDF file from my drive in my drive. So I'm directly downloading those PDF file from my drive into this PDF folder. So now you can see that in this PDF folder we have both this PDF file. So now I will just extract the data from this PDF file using by PDF directory loader. So if I just write over here, that will show you the data which we have extracted. So now you can see over here we have extracted all the data that we have inside this two PDF. So you can see over here this is a huge amount of data that we have extracted from both of these PDF and this is quite large data. Okay. So that's look good. So now after we have extracted the data from those PDFs. Now here you can see that in our data variable, we have all that data saved that we have extracted from the PDF. So now in the next step, we will split the data into small number of chunks. And in each chunk, we will have maximum 500 English characters and there will be a overlap of 20 characters. So there will be overlap of 20 characters among each of the text chunk. So let me just split the text into text chunks. As I told you at the start, we cannot pass the extracted data directly to the Lama2 model because Lama2 model has an input token limit of 4096 token or 16,000 English characters and the data, if we have multiple PDF and we extract the data from those PDF, they can be more than 16,000 English characters. So if I just write doc0 or doc3 over here, okay. It's docs. And if I just write the word over here. So you can see that these are the text chunk and each text chunk contain maximum 500 English characters and there will be 20 characters over there. Okay. Now I will download the embeddings from Hugging Face. So now you can see over here. I'm just downloading embeddings from Hugging Face and we are using this trans Sentence Transformers models to download the embeddings. Okay, so if we want to see this, so now we can, you can see that we are just downloading the embeddings from Hugging Face and we are using Sentence Transformers model and you can find more details over here. Okay, so after downloading embeddings from Hugging Face, let's find the length of the embedding so you can just uh, use embed dash query embed dash query to find the length of those embeddings and they turned out to be 384 so okay so now next what i will do is i will just go to pine cone from here so now you can see that i am in the pine cone so i have uh I, in my pine cone i have just free uh, i don't have a paid account i have a free uh, account so in the free account, you cannot create more than one index. So I will just leave my previous index and just create my new index. So this is a limitation. Uh, if you have a free account on Pinecone, you cannot create more than one index. So I will just create a new index by the name Langchain Pinecone. And we have find the dimension of our embeddings is 384. I told you in the notebook. So I have just a starter package. So I'm just create my index. I will just click on create index from here. Okay, so if I just go to indexes from here, you can see it's initializing. And if I just click from here, our environment is, is we can just copy the environment from here. And you can just go over here and just paste the environment over here. And here you can paste your Pinecone API key. So you, you can easily create your account using Gmail or email, uh, any other email on Pinecone. And you can just Go to API key and here you will find your API key. You can just copy that key value from here. Okay, so it's currently initializing. So this might take few seconds before it gets initialized. And here you can paste your Pinecone API key over here. Okay. And if you just see over here, this is your uh, index name which you can find over here. 
Okay, so you can just copy this name from here and so you can just add this name over here. So you can just add this name over here. So I will just add this name over here. You can see that in the index name, you can add the name. So let's see if the, our fine is initialized. So it's initializing, so this might take few seconds. Then we are good to go. Now you can see the green signal. It means it's ready. So now let's go back to our, so now we are just back over here. So now I will initialize the pine cone via the API key environment. Okay, so I just forgot this step. And here I have just passed my index name. Okay, so now I will just create embeddings for each of the text chunks. Okay, so now you can see that we have created embeddings for each of the text chunk and let me just go back to the pine cone. So now uh, what we can see over here is one thing we just need to remember is that we have split our text into how many chunks? We have split our text into 168 chunks. So we have 168 different chunks. So we will have 168 vectors. So we will create um, one embedding for each of the text chunk. So we will have total 168 embeddings or 168 vectors. Okay. So now you can see over here we have total 168 uh, vectors because we have 168 text chunk and we will create embeddings or vectors for each of the text chunk. Okay. So if you have already, like you can say that I have created embeddings for this PDF. So now I don't, if I just read on this strip, I don't want to uh, create embeddings again and save those embeddings in the cloud. So if you already have, like I have already have an index in file code. So I have already have an index in Pinecone where we have saved our embedding. So we have saved our embeddings in Pinecone in the cloud. So if I just want to use these embeddings or these embeddings again, I don't need to read on the script and save those embeddings in the Pinecone. So I can simply run this. If you have already have an index, like I have already have an index in Pinecone, so I can load the embeddings in my Google Colab notebook by running this cell. Okay. So now what we have done is that we have created embeddings and we have saved those embeddings into fine code vector database. So now when the user asks a question, we will create embeddings for that question and then we will do a semantic search. So now here the user is asking a question. Now we will creating embeddings for that question and then we are doing a similarity search. So the user asks a question. Now we are just creating embeddings for that question and now we are doing the similarity search and these are the three answers that we got. One, two, three. So this is the first answer. This is the second answer. This is the third answer. This is the fourth answer, which we got for our question. By setting the K value, you can just write, if you want to just get two best responses of your question from the embeddings, you can just set the K value from here. Okay. This will give you four best responses. Okay. So now I will just create a Lama2 wrapper over here. So now I will just do notebook logging over here. So I will just go to hugging face. Okay. So let me just go back here. So now you can see I'm in the hugging face account. Uh, you can easily create your account for hugging face. And it says token. Here you have your API key. You can just copy this. Okay. And you can just go back to over here and you can just Place your SS token over here and just click on login from here. Okay. So now we will download tokens over here. And now we are just using up downloading a Lama 2 model. So as we are not assessing the Lama 2 model through API key, so we'll just create a pipeline. So Lama 2 model is a text generation model. Okay. So we are just downloading the Lama 2 model over here. And then I will be just creating a pipeline. We have downloaded the model, so now we'll just create a pipeline over here. Okay, and I have to set the temperature value 0 0.1. So if we are doing some 
uh, if you are generating some code, then you can set the temperature value high. But if you are want to generate some text, article, block, then you can set the temperature value zero. So the temperature value varies from zero to one. So if the temperature value is high, it means the model is more creative. It will, it might generate uh, some wrong response, but it will be very creative. It will, uh, it will be very much creative. But if the temperature value is low, so it means the model is model is very deterministic. It will generate a to the point response, like you can say. So as you want to generate a response from our PDF, we don't want the model to be very creative. So we can set the temperature value low, like 0 0.1. So we are not setting the temperature value above because high because we want to generate a response or from our PDF files. We want, don't want the model to be very creative. We want it to be deterministic. Okay. So now here we are just creating a prompt template. So this is a default system prompt which we are defining. So these are the instruction and system tags. So if you just go to Llama GitHub, okay. So if you just go to the Llama to GitHub repository from here. So now here you can find that. So as we are using chat model over here. So if you just see over here, we are using Llama 2 chat model. Okay. So Llama 2 comes with a uh, pre-trained and fine-tuned model as well. So like you can say that we have the pre-trained model as well in Lama 2 and fine tune model. So Lama 2 pre-trained models cannot be used uh, for a chat or question answer. So you can see over here, these models are not fine tuned for chat or question answer. So here we want to use our uh, Lama 2 model for chat or do question answer from our PDF. So we cannot use the pre-trained model. These should be prompted so that expanding answer is a natural contribution of the prompt. So uh, Lama 2 pre-trained model can be used for sentence completion, but Lama 2 pre-trained model cannot be used for chat or question answer. So here we are using fine-tuned Lama 2 chat model for the chat completion. Okay. And here, if you just go over here further. So here you can read that to get the expected feature and performance for them. For that fine, from the fine-tuned chat model, we need to follow the instruction and system tags. Okay, so we need to follow the formatting so that we can get the expected feature and performance. So, like you can see over here, here we are just following the uh, tags, instruction and system tags over here. This is a default system prompt. Uh, we can say that uh, Lama 2 model has been trained on that default system prompt. I have updated this uh, different prompt, default system prompt update, or you can say this is a custom system prompt. And we here we have the instruction tag and here we have the system tags. So default system prompt will come inside the system tags which we have over here. So you can see that our system prompt is coming inside the uh, system tags, our system prompt. Okay. And this is our instruction which I am passing. Okay. So we have the context question. So now we using this we will create a template and this is our template. Use the following piece of text to answer the questions at the end. If you don't know the answer, just say that you don't know. Don't try to make an answer. So this, is a, this is the default system prompt. And this is my instructions, which you can find over here. The a question will be the user, the input the user will query. So now I will just create a prompt template over here. And we have two inputs, like you can see in my instruction. One is the context and the other is the question, which is the input. So I am just passing input variable for context question over here. And now I'm just uh, using retrieval QA from, uh, from Langchain so that I can do question answer or chat with my PDFs. Okay, so let me just ask a question. YOLO V7 is used for and let's see what response do we get over here. So I'm just asking a question. So this question answer lies in this paper. So like you can see here, based on the provided context, the question answer to the question YOLO V7 is used for object detection. And this is very right answer. YOLO V7 is used for object detection as YOLO V7 is an object detection model. So now we can also do a question answer over here as well. So we can simply remove this and we can just start the question answer over here. YOLO V7 outperforms which model? So if I ask this question, Yolo V7 outperforms which models? And let's see what response do we get for this question. So 
here you can see that right user input exit so if the user right exit it will simply exit uh, so this while loop will end okay so this might take few more seconds before we get the response here is our response based based on the provided context yolo v7 out outperforms the following models and here you can see that uh, which models yolo v7 outperforms okay and i can just ask seven areas and if i ask the other question from this uh pdf what is regional green qualification Okay, so I'm just asking the another question from this resume. And let's see what response do we get for this. Based on the uh, provided context, strategy qualification is PhD in English. According to context, with a PhD in English from the University of Illinois at Urban campaign in 2023. Okay, so now if we just see over here, this is our right answer or not. So we can see that uh, Rachel Grease is PhD in English. So we have got a correct response and you can see over here. So that's correct. So we can, if you just want to exit from here, you can see the right exist and this will end now. Okay. So that's all from this tutorial. I hope you have learned something from here, this tutorial. Thank you for watching. Have a great day. Bye-bye.